This is the small group video to go along with session one of our series, Elijah. And today we're talking about becoming a champion. What you might want to do in your small group is read 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 1, all the way through 24. And uh, that might set you up better for some great discussion on your questions. So what I want to look at today is the beginning of uh, Elijah's story, at least as it's recorded in the Bible. When Elijah moves from being a nobody to someone who is known, and that's not really a great thing, at least not for the people who dislike him. But the thing about Elijah is, is that he became a champion for God. And, and we live in a world today that needs that, and we need to become champions in our lives and in our spheres. So we find in Elijah's story, um, we find a man who believes in God. And he lives in a nation that doesn't believe in God. So that's where our faith begins. That's where our journey into victory begins, is by believing in God. Uh, Elijah's name means, my God is Jehovah. So we begin with that question, who is your God? Because if your God is Jehovah God, the God who is the Father of Jesus Christ, then you are staged to become a champion. Now, how do champions become? Where do they come from? You find in 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 2 and 3, that God sent Elijah to a brook, a brook that had water in it for a season, and the ravens brought him food. Now, the name of that brook, Kirith, meant cut off or cut down, and it was the Kirith Valley or brook, but it meant like a torrent. So I imagine uh, growing up in an area that has uh, streams or dry creeks that have been cut through the desert, I imagine something like Bitter Creek in Rock Springs, Wyoming, that has cut through the desert this valley, and that was something maybe close to where Elijah was staying. But the place meant cut off. And the truth was is that Elijah stood for God and then he was cut off. He was put in a place by himself. He was alone in isolation. And, and I would argue that part of that was for Elijah. This is something God does. He puts his children in the wilderness, uh, in, in out of the way places. It gives them a season to look inward and in that become whole and be healed. That is always God's plan for us. So you should know that the champions rise from the ashes of their own pain and isolation. So if you know pain and isolation, you're set up to be a champion. Another thing that Elijah learned in that was to depend upon God. And this is a critical lesson that we'll bring out more in the sermon uh, that we'll stream live. But understand that Elijah, he had to depend on God. Ravens were bringing him food. I don't know, I don't know much about ravens, but my experience is they don't bring you food, they steal it. <laughs> So somehow God had done that. And in, through this moment, Elijah learned to depend upon God very, very greatly in that season. And then you'll also see as you move into the latter part of the verses of 1 Kings 17, around verse 7 and 9, the creek dries up and God sends Elijah somewhere else. So not only did he learn to depend upon God, he also learned to obey God. Now this is what makes champions. In fact, let me read John 14, 21. Jesus said, those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. Because they love me, my Father will love them and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. You see, love for God actually looks like obedience to Jesus Christ. And so, champions rise out of isolation and pain. Champions learn to depend upon God. Champions learn to obey God. So I conclude today briefly with, are you a champion? Are you willing to be a champion? Because the world needs men, women, children, parents, grandparents, even people in politics and in social leadership and government leadership needs men and women to rise up and be champions for others on behalf of our Father God. So, great question to mull over and talk about in your small groups. Are you a champion? Are you willing to be made into a champion?